Bobby Marks, front office insider from the Vertical, 20 years NBA experience, worked with the uh, New Jersey Brooklyn Nets, former assistant GM, helped build a team that got the back-to-back NBA Finals, PT with those Nets teams. We'll take a look at these NBA playoffs the summer ahead from a front office perspective. As Bobby Marks from the Vertical joins us right now on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN. Bobby, welcome back to the show, pal. How are you? I'm good, guys. How are you? Really good. Uh, man, these playoffs have been a lot of storylines. Uh, when you look at from a, you know, for a first round, uh, to have as many intriguing matchups as we've had in this first round, you can't ask for much more for the NBA. A lot of times these first round matchups are uh, five games or uh, four game, five games and out. No, you're right. I mean, I think outside of the Golden State series, which will either you know end tonight or in, in uh, Oakland, you know, midweek in that Cleveland series, which was still a good series. I mean, there was little separation there. You know, every game kind of has a little bit of its, of its own identity. I mean, you can go with the Utah win last night with with Joe Johnson and and uh, you know Toronto on the ropes the other night and then able to win the you know uh, you know even that series out. Um, you know, Boston's come back from down 2-0. So, uh, you know, I, I don't remember as many series has been as, you know, 2-2 tied. You know, we're, we're going to go into possibly some game sevens like we saw, you know, three or four years ago. But um, you, but there's little separation here, you know, outside of, I think, you know, where Golden State is right now and, and probably certainly where Cleveland is. And, Bobby, you tweeted out every game in this playoffs is a chess match and you have to keep your emotions in check whether you win or lose. Well, no, you're right. I mean, I just remember, you know, being in New Jersey and Brooklyn, you know, um, you know, I, you know, we played Toronto three years ago, you know, we're up two one, we, we get down, we're now we're two, two, we lose, we're, you know, game five when, uh, you know, and it's three, two, and then, you know, we're down three, two, and then, you know, wind up winning two games in a row. And um, you, the emotions of the, of the roller coaster of the playoffs, it, you know, it, it's certainly a high and a low and you kind of have to stay, you know, in somewhere in between. Bobby Marks from the Vertical joining us here on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN, taking a look at the NBA playoffs from kind of a front office point of view here. You mentioned that uh, Utah Clippers series. Bobby, if you're in the Clippers front office right now and this Clippers team uh, doesn't get out of the first round, what's that day after meeting like up there? Well, it's almost like deja vu. I mean, you've gone through it, the you know, with the Houston loss, a couple of years ago, and now you know Portland last year. And if it, if it's Utah, then it's it's the same script, but it's a little bit different because you, your three you know main free agents, you know, with Chris Paul and Blake Griffin and you know JJ Redick, you know they're all they're all free agents, unlike you know previous years and everything. And um, you know, but you've got to reassess as far as where where this team is. It you know you're a repeater tax team uh, this year. You'll be a repeater tax team next year, and you've got to figure out what the cost is and. And I hate when people say, "Well, you, you just blow it up." But if you if you look at how that roster is, is that you know there's there's not much of an infrastructure there. They're, they they don't have any draft picks to kind of fall back on. Um, their next line of defense is not very strong. If you look at Crawford and <clears throat> and Rivers, and um, you know, so letting a guy like Blake Griffin walk, although it sounds nice, you can't replace them because you won't have the cap space to do so. Yeah, you know, and a lot of people talking about Bobby that if they they don't get out of this, that you know you blow the team up or start over. Um, but is that the direction they should go in with Blake Griffin getting hurt? I mean, they have kind of a, another built-in excuse here. But uh, do you think that this team, as constructed, um, should stay together for another run if they don't get out of this one? Well, that's the hard question. Is because if you know, I think the best thing would be to it would be for Griffin to opt into his contract. I don't think he will. But I think for the you know you signed Paul to his long the long term deal and if, if Griffin opted in, I think that would be the best scenario and and it could save you you know thirty or forty million dollars. But I mean I think in all honesty with this even if healthy, I I still see this team you know a four or five seed in in, in the West when you look at where Golden State is and San Antonio every year, the the steps that Houston has taken where you know this this Utah team if if they sign some of their you know, Gordon Hayward and George Hill in the off season will certainly be in, in the mix with Ru- Rudy Gobert there. So it, it's hard because if you go the blow up route and you, you know, you go in that direction, they, they haven't drafted well in the past. They've got assets going out in the future. So where you, and then you're going to really going to have to build it through, through cap space, which is, is, which is challenging because you've got that Austin Rivers contract. You've got the Jamal Crawford contract. You've got DeAndre Jordan there. So, 
it, it's a competitive team, but you're kind of in that you're in, you're kind of stuck in that in between it, uh, area. Bobby Marks with us. Uh, Bobby, what's the Paul George story now? Is that the most interesting story maybe this off season? I, I think so. Just based on, I think it's it's more interesting than probably with, with Jimmy Butler because Jimmy's got a couple more years left on his contract, but. You know, with Paul George, you know he'll technically be an expiring contract when we when we hit the summer because he'll he'll likely opt out of that contract um, in the summer of eighteen. And you know, a Pacer team that's lost in the playoffs in the first round two years in a row. Um, you know, they've got some big decisions. You've got the Jeff Teague free agency, C.J. Miles. Um, they don't have much flexibility to kind of uh, improve from from the outside. And, and then you've got the, the Paul George hanging over your head and. And I, you know, just in my experience with expiring contracts, there's n- not much value there as far as from a trade standpoint because a, the team, there's the uncertainty to retain that player, and then b, the you know team's reluctance as far as to giving up, uh, you know, a lot of assets. So, I think if you're Larry Bird and you, you know, you assess the off season, you've got to sit down with Aaron Mintz, Paul George's agent, and figure out where the direction is. You know, we we've got that. Uh, all rookie, all NBA vote, you know, in, at, you know, in a, in a couple months here, that that will determine because, you know, from a, an extension standpoint, it's you know, it's a forty, fifty million dollar difference there. So, there's a lot of questions in, in uh, Indiana. Um, you know, who who kind of budges? I guess will be the, the next domino. What do you think of the job that Larry Bird's done? You brought up the guy from French Lick, so we'll talk about him. Do you think that that's something we should be taking a closer look at? Well, it's interesting. I mean, I think if you look at his track record, at least in the last, I guess, seven years, they, they've made the playoffs six out of the last seven years. I mean, they had, you know, a team that went to the Eastern Conference Finals uh, multiple years, but now you've kind of hit a rut. They've they've done it certainly. A good, he's done a good job drafting. When you look at Miles Turner and where you where you pick Paul, Paul George at, but you kind of missed out on the Monte Ellis's, the Rodney Stuckey's, guys that when you had cap space to to take advantage of. You, you missed you missed out on that, and that's the danger of you know with, with teams with room to go out there because when you use it, you know th- those are the players that you're, you're stuck with. So it, it's they're kind of at a crossroads right now, and I, I think you know Larry has done certainly a, a good job, but I think the true test right now is a can you retain your franchise player, and if you don't, basically what is what's the plan you know next. Uh, Bobby Marks from the Verticals with us here, looking at the NBA, the playoffs, the off season coming up here uh, as the matchups kind of break down. If you, how about this Milwaukee Toronto series? I'd like to get your perspective on a Toronto front office guy right now, thinking, "Man, we're getting pushed by this Milwaukee team. We put, uh, we really thought that we at least make the Eastern Conference Finals with this team, right?" So, what is their thought process if they get bounced in the first round? Well, that's 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 you know that's the domino effect there too. I mean, they're almost like a little bit uh, resembling uh, the Clippers out west, but I think with a better, you know, with a better infrastructure. But yeah, I mean, you you went out and you did the the Serge Ibaka trade and the PJ Tucker trade, which even if they had, do lose in this series, I, I still would have done that. But now you've got you've got to figure out what the cost of this team is. A team that's lost in the fir- uh, you know, potentially could lose in the first round. You've got the Kyle Lowry free agency who he'll opt at, likely opt out of that contract. You've got Ibaka, you've got PJ Tucker, Patrick Patterson. So what's what's the cost of, of a team like that? 125, 130 million potentially, and and that's a that's a big number for for a team that's kind of has plateaued a little bit. But I, I think they've they've you know I think they've got control of the series. I, I you never know with with who will show up uh, you know you know tonight. But you've got home court advantage. If you don't, if you don't win this series, you know, with, with and lose another game at home, I, I certainly think you've got to reassess where, where this team is. Yeah, it's a, that one would be a, probably a huge punch uh, to the gut if you're Toronto. Maybe they don't think they're a championship team, but they certainly think they could get out of the first round. I want to look at also, you know, the other game tonight, Washington Atlanta. Um, if let, let's say Washington wins this series, you know, pushes Cleveland, maybe what are they missing? What's the next piece for them? Well, they got two things they've got to figure out. They've got to figure out the Porter free agency, uh, restricted free agency, and as well as Bogdanovic. Those are the two guys. But I, I think where they missed out was last summer, and they've their backcourt has basically, you know, covered up for some of the misses. The Jan Mahinmi's, the Jason Smith. Uh, they signed Andrew Nicholson, who was eventually traded. Uh, I, I think their bench has got to get a little better here. Um, can you get a backup point guard? 
Um, Kelly Oubre Jr. certainly has done a, a nice job. Um, but if you can ever get anything out of those guys that you signed last summer, you know, I think that will be an, an approved team. But, you know, the, the two, the Beal wall combo can only, can certainly only take you so far. Bobby, I want to get your take on uh, this Boston Chicago series from your from a front office perspective here because, you know, Boston's down 2 0. Now they're back in the series. But you look back to the trade deadline and, and Danny Ainge and the job he did or the decisions he didn't make. Uh, when you look at this Boston team, did he let that team down by not moving that pick and getting a high profile player? Or do you like the way that Ainge played it with where this team is in their you know, kind of process? Well, I think you can kind of look at it in, in two different directions. I think if you, from a perspective standpoint, where this <clears throat> where this Boston team was um, back in 2013, I, I still consider this a rebuild. And I know they're they're a number one <clears throat> a number one seed, but it's it's a rebuild where you you've got players with Horford and Isaiah Thomas, you know, two all stars. But I don't know if you can equate them as, as franchise level players. You know, where they were in a lottery <clears throat> in the playoffs the last three years here. Um, I understand the temptation from a from a trade standpoint that you've got all these assets to, to do so, but I, I still see this window open for a couple of years here, and I think that's kind of where Danny's reluctance was. That Cleveland team is still going to be there this year to put your chips in the middle for a Paul George, um, you know, for a year and a half. I think from sustaining success long term. Um, I, I think it was the right move to do. You know, if they lose in the next two games, which I don't think they do, I guess we can probably talk about that again. Um, but I, I see this team with control in the series. You know, they'll, they'll have their hands full again, whoever they play, either, you know, Washington and Atlanta, and then certainly probably Cleveland in, in the finals there. Bobby Marks with us. Hey, Bobby, what do you like about Memphis? Should San Antonio be worried? Well, I like their toughness. <laughs> I mean, I really do. And I mean, they. They basically their 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 characteristics is basically they're taking you know the the personality of their coach and you know when you get Conley and I think changing the lineup certainly has helped when you put um you put Randolph at the four and then you put Ennis at the three you kind of basically put your 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 best players out there and, and Jermichael Green came off the bench I think if you know the way Conley has played and, and Gasol Randolph at that level. Um, you know, they, they've brought that team back to life. I, I still like San Antonio. I mean, we're, what Ka- Kawhi Leonard has, has been able to do, and they've got, you know, home court. But I, I thought they were dead in the water after those first two games. I really did. I thought maybe they could take a game at home, and then San Antonio would, you know, win, win a, you know, a game five. But uh, but their their toughness, which has basically been their, their characteristic over the last three or four years, is, is, is on display right now. Yeah, that's a, that's a series where I don't think anybody gave Memphis a shot at the beginning of that thing, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, and, and you look, they, they're down 2-0, Fisdale goes off, and a lot of people kind of looked at it, you know, what is he trying to accomplish here? He won that, you know, that's a veteran team, right? I mean, he, he wins over a veteran bunch of guys by standing up for them. No, you're right, and I and I was asked this, you know, would he have done it if it was if they had won that game too? And I, and I said, probably not. I don't think he would have. Because he saw a team that had, had lost pretty bad, I I understand that the free throw discrepancy, but you know he he you know what he was able to do, kind of rally the troops, take one for the team. You know, I think showed a lot to the, to those guys in, in, in the locker room. I, I know when when the game starts, think, think things are different, but they they know they have a coach in their corner there. Bobby, uh, one of the things uh, over at the Vertical, uh, you guys are doing the Summer Agenda Series, and uh, you start off with a couple of young teams. One that's obviously close to us, and that's the Sixers. T-Wolves, Sixers, um, what do you think their summer looks like now? After years and years of not being a part of the summer, really, uh, give us your overview of where you think that team is uh, direction is heading this summer. Well, I think Brian's going to be aggressive here. I mean, I really do. I think, you know, where where the roster is, I think there's something more to sell this year than it may be in previous years. And I, I know the win total is, you know, in the high 20s there. But, you know, with, you know, how Embiid has play, have played, I know it's a small sample of, you know, 30, 31 games there. Um, to sell, you know, the, the ability of have, having Ben Simmons back, I think what you do in the draft will certainly have an impact. I mean, the, the, the good fortune of, you know, possibly, you know, your pick, the Laker pick, or maybe you get a swap with, with Sacramento and, and jump in that, that that top spot there. I think there is certainly appeal. And then you, you factor in that there could be, you know, $40, $40 $50 million in tap space. So, 
you know, I, I think when you watch the playoffs and you watch the, the back, at least the back end of, of the East there and stuff, there, there's not much separation from, you know, the, some of the teams that, that miss the playoffs when you, when you, if you factor in some health and, some, and a little bit of, of good luck here. And, and I, I think Brian's going to take an aggressive a, a, approach this summer with his, his cap space, not, not spend it all. But, you know, similar to what he did last year with, you know, Henderson and Bayless and, and uh, Rodriguez, maybe, you know, certainly upgrade the talent level a little bit. Do you think uh, if Brian and his team are looking at the team he had out there, do you think that this season changed their mind of where they are, uh, you know, in terms of uh, a rebuild? Like, do you think that they are more advanced than maybe they thought they were when they got here? I think so. I think that stretch, I think it was in February or I think it was February before the, the all-star break. Um, I think that kind of gave you a little bit of a platform as far as where things were with, you know, if Embiid is healthy, the role of Saric, um, you know, you got some good point guard play. I think if, if you can maybe get, you know, based on where Bayless is health wise, I like what T, where TJ is, but I think, you know, certainly a backup and I think he solidified that he's a backup, but you know, do you get some help in in, in the draft there? But there, I mean, you know how they played, and at that level, I think that kind of you know certainly gave you a little bit of a of a blueprint where where things that become where you know maybe you took two steps forward and then you know another two back. I think I know it didn't end as well as as you might have hoped, but I think if you, if you get some good fortune here with the draft, uh, as I mentioned, with health, and you find you know you know some a, a free agent with cap space. There, there's no reason why they, you know, can compete for some, you know, a playoff spot, play some meaningful games in March and April, which is which is the goal here. Yeah, it seems that uh, maybe Milwaukee is a is a blueprint for a lot of these teams to say, hey, uh, we not only can we maybe get in, we can make some noise. Well, you're right, and I think that's where you know the appeal of the big market teams, New York, Chicago, um, L.A. I think when you when you and when you and you've seen it the last couple. Of Summers here is that you've, if you've got something to sell, a product, or at least some hope, that free agents kind of gravitate towards that. And, and as long as you have the flexibility to improve, I, you know, I, I talked about Detroit last year. They were a good example. You know, they got they got into the, the playoffs as a as an eight seed, and you know, people said, well, they should have just gone to the lottery. I said, well, they had, you know, you get in, you let the young kids play, and you go from there. You know, unfortunately, you know, they they ruined some of their flexibility with some of the, the moves they made in the summer. But I think that's where. If Philadelphia is ever able to, you know, get into the playoffs, which I certainly think is a realistic next summer, you still have the flexibility with the Sacramento pick in a couple of years. You know, your young kids are still in the development stage, sprinkled in with some veterans there. You think, Bobby, from a front office perspective, that more teams will head down this Sixers road, this Sixers path? I, it's hard to swallow, though. I mean, you guys are there. I mean, I, I was in that building, you know, th- you know, two or three years ago, and you're in mid-January, and you've, you you you've got you know ten wins, and it's 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 you know you don't see the the uh, you know the end of the tunnel. I I think the path I think where I see teams going, and I think you've got to rely on your personnel, is, and I call it the Miami model. And I think we're we're at the Heat show this year, and I know they've got Dragic and Whiteside, two good players. But if you can find value in one and two year contracts and maybe do an, an overpay and you've, you've got a strong player development system and a good coach and, 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 and a backing of, um, you know, a management team, there, there's no reason why you shouldn't be competing for for a playoff spot. And I think I think that Miami model is probably more realistic than maybe going towards that, that what Philadelphia did, you know, when, when Sam was there. Uh, Bobby Marks from the Vertical. Uh, check it out, of course, uh, the Vertical podcast. Uh, one of the good and uh, best NBA pos- uh, podcasts out there. Check it out at Bobby Marks forty two on Twitter as the NBA playoffs continue. You see any team built to beat Cleveland in the East? Anybody got a shot? Well, I, I mean, on paper, I would say Toronto, but you know, they haven't. You know, I, I, I they're so unpredictable that I don't know what you know what they're gonna get. What you know, what shot they're gonna give you? I, I maybe if they get through this series against Milwaukee, is it a, can they flip the switch against against Cleveland? But I think Cleveland showed a little bit, and I, I know the games were were close. And you know, the bench where they went with that second unit in that game three, I think that will certainly help down the road. And I think. Just them finishing off Indiana in four games and having a week off and, and kind of you know get it a little bit healthy and rest. I think that's going to be their their, their biggest ally. At, you know what, you know not the team they're going to play in rounds two and three. Anybody got a shot to beat Golden State? Not like not not at full health. 
I think that, that Warrior team, if Durant can stay healthy and get back healthy, I think that's a well-oiled machine. But yeah. I think you've got to watch the Steve Kerr element too, though. I mean, I really do. And um, and I know Mike Brown did a good job over the weekend. But I think if, if, if how long, you know, Coach Kerr is out, um, you know, in a in a second round or West Finals or even possibly an NBA Finals, I think that that element certainly comes into play. All right, Bobby Marks from the Vertical. Everybody here on the Sports Bash, great perspective, Bobby. We appreciate the time. Sounds good. Thanks, guys.